How you doing, toy fans? This is episode 16 of Talking Toys. I am your host, Brock Lauer. And Kyle Walters. And with today's episode will be about frustrations of a toy collector and animated shows our toys, playsets, figures are based on. Thank you for joining us again. This is our 16th episode. Uh, if you haven't heard from us in a while, it's because just a lot of uh, personal stuff, schedules that conflicted, uh, demanding jobs, and just stuff like that just kind of came up. It was a little bit longer than usual, and, and vacations came up and conflicting schedules. So we're back now, ready for a new topic, ready for October episode, and just going uh, telling you what's going on with the channel. As you know, you've probably seen some a couple changes. Uh, we will be on SoundCloud. Hopefully this episode will be on SoundCloud, and... A couple news. The shorts are still coming. Making those as as fast as I can. And also a new segment that came out on our channel, which was Stories of Toy Companies, which is a documentary series we're working on, such as Stories of Toy Companies. It's a short documentary videos I'm posting up on our channel about, you know, just ever, these different toy companies that have came and went, but also toy companies that are here with us today and have grown with us as well. So we'll be, you've seen the Toy Biz one that's up right now on our channel, Talking Toys on YouTube. These won't be any longer than 10 minutes long. My next episode is about uh, Kenner Toys, which should be interesting. And we'll be doing other companies such as like Lego, Pop Funko, or Funko Pop, NECA, KB Toys, Toys R Us, just like all those awesome toy shops, giving you a brief history of what what they were, what they brought to the toy industry, and uh, what happened to them, or uh, how do they become big as they are today. So that's going on to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please feel free to like, uh, comment, and subscribe on any of our videos and podcasts. And also, thanks for the support. So welcome to the channel if you're new. And also, let's get into the updates. We'll run by these really quick because we have a whole bunch of them. All right, so starting off with Lego, they have a Baby Yoda character set, which is like a buildable Baby Yoda. Uh, Lego Cantina, which is a Lego mega set. That's going to be like $349.99, uh, based off the Lego Cantina from Star Wars A New Hope. It's huge, with a bunch of minifigures, uh, pretty much all the Cantina characters you see in the Star Wars scene. The band, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo you know, walrus head, and uh, just a whole bunch of different characters. Made another Lego set, which is like a mega set, which is the Batwing with the Joker and Batman. That came out on Batman Day. It's like a huge uh, Batwing from the uh, 89 Batman series. Uh, it's pretty cool. Another mega Lego set was Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. That'll be $399.99. What's involved in that set, which is pretty much a Lego store exclusive, or you get on lego.com, it comes with a Pretty much a whole Diagon Alley uh, street with a wand shop, ice cream shop, joke shop, Quidditch shop, daily profit, and bookshop. So those are those mega sets Legos really expanding on, doing bigger things, um, really trying to make different product as opposed to your run of the mill set. Did you see any of those Lego sets? Uh, the Batwing or anything? I saw the Batwing. Batwing looks incredible. If it's anything like uh, like the 89 Batmobile, it's going to sell out like that. Yeah. And it's going to be really damn expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these sets are, like what I just mentioned, are bigger sets, which you can get either on the Lego store. But they're not sold at, like, regular retail because they're such huge sets. If you live in Ohio, uh, stop up at Beachwood Mall. That's the only one in Northeast Ohio I can think of. I think there might be one in Columbus, too, right? Yeah, there's, like, one per city. Um, usually in their upscale malls, or you can get them online. It's not a big deal if you don't have a Lego store. Um, they do sell them online, but yeah, those giant sets you can buy at uh, at those Lego stores. McFarland Toys has some uh, new reveals. They have the Dark Knight Metal, Death Metal, Batman with the Bat Cycle with the Bone Bat, which was interesting. Uh, just about to finish Dark Knight's Metal. Or the first one, or yeah, Batman Metal or whatever. I don't know anything about that, but I will say the aesthetic looks. Uh, some of McFarlane's, because they're because he decided to do seven inch, look a little off. Yeah. But the aesthetic of that, especially the uh, the bike, it looks really good. Yeah, I mean it's cool. Um, I think it's really cool, actually. Um, I just I'm not into that seven inch scale. 
But, you know, I give the guy credit. You know, he's making stuff that hasn't been made before. And also Batman Last Night on Earth. Uh, Bane with Scarecrow. They didn't show the Bane. The Scarecrow figure came out from the uh, Batman Last Night on Earth comic book, which is, was pretty good. Is that the one with the uh, with the big metal legs? Is that the Scarecrow? Yeah. Actually, those are like fear talks and uh, shots, syringes oh, wow. that he's like crawling. Like nothing spring. like Scarecrow. That's weird. It's weird, yeah, because he has no legs. So it's like it's odd. It's it's just the concept from the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, um, last night on Earth storyline, which was three issues, so it was a really small comic book uh, story. But we'll definitely have a future episode talking about comic books and. Just, just kind of taking a segue from toys just into to comic books. So a future episode will be based off talking about comic books. Yeah, that's the one. I guess I can see it now when I look more closely. I'm curious if his fingers are articulated. If they are, that would be extra I cool. I mean, I assume he'll be stand up on some sort of clear stand and then also his legs or his fingers or whatever. It's, it's The art's really good. They haven't shown the Bane, but they said they're making a Bane. Um, other figures they're making are Batman and Wonder Woman with the Mohawk. Also, they're making Mark Farland's making Batman, Red Sun Superman, the Drown Witch from Dark Knight's Metal, Damien, Robin, and yeah, those are the figures he's making. Should be interesting. We'll see uh, how that works. It's exclusive when you talk about that kind of stuff because it's like if you've read the book, a lot of people will buy the figures if they collect action figures, but. We'll see. I mean, it's cool that he's doing different things. It's just, i just not a huge fan of the scale, but I'm also getting, re- getting really fatigued with McFarlane's, we're going to do more Batman, we're going to do more Batman, we're going to do more Batman. It's like, dude, you were totally neglecting Wonder Woman characters, Flash characters, and we've talked about this countless times on, on the channel, but... I am slightly interested in, with the red, with the red, uh, looks like he's doing a two-pack with Red Hood and Nightwing. The Red Hood looks pretty good, but once again, it's just... A stupid seven in scale like uh what's the i can't think of the name the wave that came out with uh, or or in a lot of places is coming out with like uh from dark knight metals the one that looks like doomsday was that devastator yeah that actually looks really good because yeah. you can put it in scale with other things but like in no universe is devastator the same height as wonder woman or batman so right. that's what annoys it's... me about some of those things is when they're the same height that's so silly and unnecessary. I mean, I just don't like it because I've seen better product. And you saw that leaked photo um, of the Mattel prototype. But it was like a figure of a Mattel Batman with the Bruce Wayne head. Oh, yeah. D- David Vonner. I follow him on Instagram. Yeah. He's the dude who – one of the dudes who invented Marvel Legends. Yeah. So what what could have been? Dude, I want that. That's what I want. With the cowl that I was, was so – Frustrated. Well, I was fr- I was frustrated, but I was like, wow. I was first, uh, first. I was impressed. I'm like, holy crap, man! What a figure. And you know, he would have eventually taken those pins out too. Yeah, he would have taken the pins out. But like, I would have bought like two of those figures in black because I like Batman in black, and they probably would have made a blue version. One without the the cowl, and then the other one with just the Bruce Wayne head. And I don't care. I would have paid like thirty bucks for that figure. Because it thing- was so well made. The thing McFarlane has to realize, too, and I think in some ways maybe he's coming around about it, but when he first started, those legs were so tall. Because, like, if something's slightly over six inch, like, I have some import figures that are slightly over six inch, but their legs are perfectly in scale with the torso, so it's like you can't really tell. Yeah. But he just doesn't hide it at all, and it's just so silly. It's it's just frustrating because that's what I wanted. I would buy that. I'd buy it in a heartbeat, and uh, I just uh, I just want someone else to get the license already because I can't take it. I mean, I, I usually licenses, toy licenses work a little bit different because one company could have a license for a three inch scale, another company could have a license for a seven inch scale, another company could have a license for a five inch scale, or another company could have a license for a six inch scale. Because isn't McFarland something like? Doesn't he have something like uh, 5 to like 12 inches his? And then I think Spin Master gets the smaller DC right now. I mean, maybe that's what it is. I don't know the specifics. I thought he said he had three years. But he, I'm sure, from the way he worded it when he first came out, was that he 
some things are coming from Warner Brothers. You know, that's why he posts the movie figures. But also, some things like... But if like, he's not making five, five six-inch figures, he shouldn't have that license from five to, what, seven, like you just said. Oh, okay, and not just that. He's coming out with the Red Sun Superman, and he's doing the same, you know, stupid garbage that DC Essentials did in the end, is you give me one flying hand, and you give me one fisted hand. Like, at least include interchangeable hands. I mean, I don't necessarily want... Hasbro to have a, a monopoly or a, yeah. a, a monopsony or any of that monopoly. stuff. No, no, there's, there's actually monopoly and monopsony. Oh, okay. Not, not to be. I thought you just pulled a Burt Kreischer and where you're like, oh, I say things and I miss say him. No, not not to be like super nerdy. I didn't know that either until I, I had to write a paper on uh, on Walmart and their supply chain and I had to talk about uh, terrible. It, well, I had to talk about like monopolies and monopsonies, yeah. and it's just a whole other thing for you know the joy of being a business major and it was interesting because i was like only in the business world can they make two words that are pretty much the same thing and be like oh we're gonna change one letter <laughs> i'm getting to the mcfarland sometimes drives me crazy oh i'll give you more plastic for the same price the guy is just out of touch it's it's uh I think they it's me. like bro quality over quantity always yeah well that's obviously the choice and then not just that but like the uh he released the teen titan cyborg which looks pretty good but you give me a Justice League, John Stewart, Superman animated Superman, Batman animated Batman, and animated Cyborg, which, by the way, the animated Cyborg is the only one out of the four of those that actually looks good. But then, are you just not going to fill out teams for the rest of those? And if you are, are you going to make Raven and Robin the same height as Cyborg? Like, right. It's just, it's so... Yeah, it's frustrating. Uh, thank God for imports, because that's where I get a lot of my <laughs> a DC figures. A lot of people figures. are going on that train, yeah. Moving on to Hasbro Marvel Legends, they had some reveals for their Hasbro Con, which was online, of course. New reveals include all six-inch Marvel Legends, classic Thanos with the snapping fingers, a retro Doctor Doom, which was an earlier release, a Silver Surfer, which was a little darker shade of silver, retro Rogue and Gambit, a concept picture for Dormammu, obviously the Walmart Silver Centurion, which is out right now, video game Captain America and Iron Man in this new wave with the Build-A-Figure uh, Mr. Fix-It, which is Hulk in a zoot suit, I guess. And that will come in that wave with Kang the Conqueror, a classic-looking Falcon, Thunderstrike, Jocasta. Those will be the figures in that line. Um, also, other figures, just to run through them, are Firestar, from uh, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. I'm so excited for that one. Really? I really am. People, I know people have been wanting it for a long time. It, I did watch that show. Uh, believe it or not, I have watched that show. Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. It's wonderfully cheesy. I love it. It is interesting. And it's, like, so, and it's, it's, just, it's, 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 it's so, good cheesy. It's not oh, crappy yeah. cheesy. It, and it's also odd that like you teamed him up with Firestar and then Iceman. Firestar is not even a character. Like they made her up for the show. Really? Yeah, it's not even like a character. Oh, dude, I didn't know that. Yeah, neither did I until someone told me. Uh, also, another figure they're making is Arcade. And also, they're making, like, uh, Marvel Legends doing a retro card back of 3.75 inch figures with Electro, Spider Man, Iron Man, Captain America, Black Panther. And they're also doing those in two packs and singles. And also, I forgot to mention a Cyclops. Those will all be on, like, retro Kenner-style card backs without the words Kenner on them. What was the what was the 80s Marvel line? Uh, Secret Wars. Yeah. I found this interesting. It was similar to that. It's similar to that. I guess Hasbro, they haven't confirmed this, but because um, some people were wondering why they didn't do Secret Wars. I didn't know this, but Mattel created the Secret Wars action figures in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. And Hasbro, obviously, you know, Mattel's... They're, one of their biggest competitors. So Hasbro doesn't have, you know, highly doubtful Hasbro has the rights to that license yeah. uh, aspect of it. And it's kind of fascinating when you think about it, the fact that Hasbro has the rights to the Marvel license, but Mattel has the rights to that little part. And it's kind of bizarre. Yeah, it's interesting. And also other figures you're making is a House of X, uh, X-Men, such as the White Magneto, Professor X with that giant helmet on, and... Marion McTaggart is also another uh, figure they're making there. Any of those legends that I recently ran off? I mean, obviously like the Firestar, but any, like the the Joe Fixit wave, you're interested in any of the exclusives? Probably you're interested in maybe Retro Doom, the Thanos, 
the uh, the Joe fix it. They messed up by not giving him a Tommy gun. Yeah. Like they had with the Hulk classics from Toy Biz. So they they he looks really good. But why would you not give him a Tommy gun? That's a that's a boo boo right there. The Rogue has me somewhat interested. First and foremost, that beautiful Firestar. I I can't. I seriously can't wait. And then the the Doom somewhat interests me too, with because the, they gave him a jetpack and stuff. One hundred percent Firestar. I think. I truly believe. I could be wrong, but I think Firestar is going to be hard to find. Yeah. Because I, I know it's a fan favorite. I know people have been wanting. I remember seeing her when people really wanted, like years back when people really wanted the Enchantress. Yeah. But eventually the Enchantress became a peg warmer. Firestar, people wanted that badly too. Uh, any other, you want Falcon in that wave? I definitely want Falcon. Um, Finally. We yeah. get a, we get a Falcon. Yeah. I guess Kang looks good, but I don't know if I'm 100% on board with Kang yet, but I definitely yeah. want Falcon for sure. I, I'm probably going to get Kang and Falcon, and I want the classic Thanos with the snappy fingers. Looks awesome from the comic book accuracy there. I'll skip the Rogue and Gambit. I just don't need him. I already got him. 3.75 inch card backs. Just not that kind of collector. Um, I'm excited about the new Dormammu concept that they had. That looked really cool. Arcade looks interesting because he's like such an obscure character. Yeah. Pass on the Joe Fixit build a figure. It looks cool, but I don't really. I'm not read up on that character, and I'll pass the video game characters. Just not interested. And the House of X X Men just not doing it for me. But uh, on to Black Series, Star Wars Black Series. They are making retro Kenner card back figures, which will feature IG Eleven, the Mandalorian. Infantry Mandalorian, Cara Dune, Death Trooper. This one's not a retro, but they're making a Jar Jar Binks with shield and lance figure. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, me, so I'm going to pass on that one. Uh, <laughs> it's your favorite. Well, well, you know what? It's probably better than most Rey figures. It, ain't it's and better? any Star Wars sequel trilogy figures. Oh, and well, I can't think of her name, but who, who's the new Jar Jar from the new series? What's a Rose Tico. Yeah, better, yeah. better than Rose, Rose Tico. Tico yeah. Also, they come out with a Darth Ray figure with like that switchblade lightsaber, a Mandalorian armor figure, which is just releasing out right now, as according to this recording. And they'll also have a new wave coming out, such as Endor, Leia, Han, Luke, Clone Trooper, Return of the Jedi, Boba Fett with uh, grapple and flames. Definitely a good one if you're teetering on which Boba Shoot. Fett you want because they're making that. They have import ones coming out. They have a Hot Toys one coming out. And they also... They're going nuts with the Boba Fett. That, and the Marvel Selects Boba Fett as well. Well, plus, yeah, plus that Boba Fett, they give you all those accessories for twenty nine ninety nine. So you're only paying like another $10 exactly. and some change. And it comes out my birthday month next year. And I'm did, really, really did, pumped. Did you see any of those Mandalorian retro figures? I was interested in. Or, well, you didn't. Really, you're not caught up on the show. I'm not caught up on that. The, <laughs> so, the joys of school. Lots of school. Lots of work. Well, um, I have watched the show, so I'm interested in the IG11 and Cara Dune because I didn't get those the first time around. So I do want those figures. I have the figure arts one of a uh, Mandalorian, so yeah. I'm, I'm good with him for right now. And I and I have the child. I mean, I have a couple of them. I have the child, but I need the silver Mandalorian and the IG11 and the Cara Dune. I do want. I'm glad they're releasing, re-releasing those. I'll pass on the Endor set. Maybe, I don't know. I, they weren't in those costumes very long in the movie, but i pass on those. Um, Jar Jar, I'll pass. But you'll probably be interested in those, right? On that one? That might be a birthday present. <laughs> uh, birthday. Burn it! Burn it with fire! I think that one will be hard to find, actually. It the actually looks... Well, they made him deluxe-ish because he contains that shield. Yeah, yeah. Maybe people will just buy it and mail it to George Lucas for an autograph. Be like, here, it's your favorite character. Yeah. Oh, and also, they're making a bunch of holiday troopers. Oh, I saw those. Yeah, what? GameStop and Amazon are getting exclusive ones so, and stuff. So, let me get this right. No Trooper will be from Walmart, exclusive. Sith Trooper will be from Best Buy. The Clone Trooper will be from GameStop, exclusive. The Storm Trooper, which is holiday, will be uh, Amazon, exclusive. And the Range Trooper will be from Target. So, those are all the holiday troopers. They'll be exclusive. Best Buy, GameStop, Amazon, Walmart. GameStop doesn't close before the holidays. But, um, yeah, that's where you can find those holiday troopers. Also, finishing out the Star Wars stuff, HasLab released that Razor Crest. They needed 6,000 backers. Totally uh, got past that for a 6-inch scale from the Mandalorian's Mandalorian ship. It comes with an escape pod and now a baby Yoda in a crib, which surpassed that 10,000. Uh, it's the Mandalorian ship, the Razor Crest. 
Did you your thoughts on the Razor Crest? Probably you don't collect that kind of stuff. Though. Nah. Yeah. Um, when they do a Galactus, though. Oh yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, we did. We both did the Sentinel. So we, we me and Kyle both uh, put in our orders for the Sentinel. Probably get that actually one year from now, based on what they're telling us. Other companies, loyal subjects, doing Lord of the Rings, Frodo, Gandalf, Legolas, and Sauron. They're kind of like these minifigure. I know you're stoked about those. Yeah, I'll have to look at the for those in Hot Topic because I know that's where they sell them. Mayfix made a Joker and Psylocke figure. The Ma- H- Mayfix, the Joker and Psylocke figure. H- the Hush style, yeah. Yeah. With you, their continued Hush line. You're interested in both of them, or maybe not Psylocke. The, the Joker, Joker for sure. I'm interested in all their Hush figures. I still ordering their first Batman release mm-hmm. on Friday because it just looks everything they're touching pertaining to this Hush line. Looks really, really good. Their second Batman release even is going to have like one of those eagle overview points mm-hmm. where he just sits and just stares at the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about that. And the Joker, I, I wish for the price he contained more accessories, but aesthetically it is Jim Lee's art to the core. And I think a couple years ago, DC Direct actually made some really cool Batman Hush figures, maybe like circa 08, 07, something like that. So about a decade ago. All right. Uh, so now to see Mayfex do updated ones with articulation and stuff, I'm just, I'm beyond over the moon. I just wish they weren't all like around the 85 to 95 dollar price point, but especially the Hush one that's supposed to come out in like March, just looks out of this world amazing. Can't wait. Yeah, I mean Mayfex is definitely import company. Usually people go with them. They're pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, Mayfex and SH Figuarts. SH Figuarts um, from Bandai and Figma. Are the uh, are usually the big three, and then Sentinel makes some really cool stuff too. But those are the big three when it comes to imports. Bandai uh, Tamashi Nations with the SH Figure Arts line, I I feel like they get a lot. They have a lot. I feel like they have a lot more licenses though because they do like Dragon Ball and Gundam and stuff. But um, Mayfex right now is doing a lot of really good things in the comic book aesthetic realm. Yeah. All right, and Super 7 released their Thundercats reveals, such as Linkso, Panthera, Hook, Mountain, Snowman, Money. You kind of backed off on the I did. I, just because I, I just, you, gotta, you gotta make sacrifices. Yeah, if it was... I, I, I thought about it. I mean, <laughs> and, and Thundercats was on the chopping block. I yeah, guess. like, I mean, I guess theoretically I could just stick with, like, the main characters if I wanted to, but... But I, you didn't regularly watch that, right? No, no, I've watched it a few times here um, and there. I do think Super 7 does a lot of really cool things, and with their new Disney line, with, with their how they're doing all these accessories with their new Disney line, if they come out with some characters I care about, like, maybe a Dumbo or something, yeah. I, I could theoretically do it. I know they came out with a, the Ren and Stimpy I showed you, which looked kind of kind of interesting. So, I mean, I want to buy something from Super 7. They make cool products. They're The lead guy who's been at a lot of Comic-Con seems genuinely nice. Like, I, he seems very likable. But, obviously, I just, yeah, with the reemergence of 80s property, like, their Ninja Turtles are selling so quick, but I don't give a shit about Ninja Turtles. All right. Thundercats look really good, but uh, eh, it... But now that they have a Disney license, I'm definitely interested to see where that goes. And Mezco released a new Supreme Knight Batman All Black exclusive. Um, you could change the logos, heads, and hands, different batarangs, bendable cape, an explosion. Quick thoughts on that. So far, unfortunately, with Mezco, the only Batman that they've released that I care about is sometime in November. Oh. Hopefully before the end of the year, I pre-ordered an 89 Batman with Michael Keaton, and that looked off the charts. But as far as just a comic-accurate Batman, I don't know what is about Mezco. I'm a sucker for bendy wire capes, and if I'm paying $80 to $90, if Hasbro can give me bendy wire for $20, bucks, yeah. I expect something that I'm literally paying, if I'm paying literally four times the price for something, you better have bending wire and everything. It's like it's like I showed you with how uh, my Shazam figure from Mezco, which I love, right. had beautiful bendy wire in it. And then the Black Adam figure, which I still love, not as much as the Shazam, but the Black Adam figure from Mezco, only had bendy wire and half the cape. And it's like, why are they being frugal with something as silly as bendy wire? Like, yeah. just give me... Bendy wire, I like it. It, well, yeah. it, it makes have, it if, makes a difference. If you it really have makes the technology, a difference. use it. It's gonna get more people on that side to buying it as opposed to saying, "Hmm, should I buy it?" Plus, if you're trying to make a figure fly, which most figures you could try, 
Especially if it's according to Mezco. Yeah, your cape is going to be flying if the character is a flying figure. And it's... They're, they have these really weird class things that I've just heard from people are a pain in the butt instead of the Benny wear, and it's just like, save the money and put the Benny wear in. Right. People will thank you. Uh, Marvel's like releasing Iron Man Silver Centurion figure and also a Fantastic Four Human Torch. Marvel Legends, forgot to mention, are releasing a Stiltman Build-A-Figure with Spider-Gwen and Spider-Ham, Miles Morales, Spider-Man... And a Red Hand Ninja. Now, the, with the Red Hand Ninja, you'll be able to buy as many as you can to make your stilt man as tall as you want. So he'll come with that Build-A-Figure piece where you can... It'll connect, but you could make that stilt man's legs longer. Also, Hasbro G.I. Joe came out with uh, six-inch figures such as Xantan, Cobra Infantry Soldier, Cobra Fang Helicopter as well. Uh, that's not a figure, but that's like a helicopter for the figures. And Hasbro released the... Power Rangers Lightning Collections with the Dino Thunder Red Ranger, the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, and the Pink Ranger, as well as the Z Putty figure, which were like those minions the Power Rangers fought in the show, which were those gray things. The Marvel's Legends, Marvel Select, Hasbro, G.I. Joe, and the Power Rangers. Any of those uh, you're interested in? Stilt Man. Stilt Man. Once you told me Stilt Man can be as big as you want him to be, I feel like that was probably, from a business perspective, one of the best things Hasbro ever did because they already knew people are going to want to, you know, make or army build these ninjas. And then when you told me you can make Stiltman as big as you want, I was like, oof. Yeah, he's awesome. a Daredevil villain. And it's really, yeah, you can make Stiltman as big as you want. And it's really interesting because he's a Daredevil villain, but... They never made a figure off Stiltman, not even 3-inch scale or 6-inch. This is the first Stiltman they've ever made. I'm really excited about that. Definitely going to get that and the Miles Morales Red Hand Ninja as well. I'll probably pass on a Spider-Gwen, Spider-Ham, but definitely interesting to me. How about those Marvel Slicks? Any of those interests? The Silver Centurion and the Human Torch? You know, I was really at first I was really on board with the Marvel Slick Human Torch because I thought we were fine, someone was finally making... What would that be? The early 40s version of... Uh, the Human Torch. Where, where he was the android. Yep. And then I examined the face closer and you told me to that... Or after you told me that, nope, he has been confirmed that he is a fantastic form. When I was like, while it looks cool, yeah. I, I'm still waiting on my android Human Torch. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was fooled too. That's what the pictures look like. And he did look like the Human Torch android to me, but... Uh, based on my sources, unfortunately, it's they said they saw a four on his chest, and it was not the android. I think they should make one, the android, human torch, and the sub, classic submariner. Submariner two pack fire, battle, fire versus water battle that, pack. That, yeah, that, that was so like, that yeah. was so like hot. Make the packaging look vintage and cool and stuff like that. Your thoughts on any of the GI Joe Hasbro or Lightning Collection for Power Rangers? I don't know anything about GI <laughs> Joe. Uh, I just know it's very popular. My they're, not, they're really hard figures to find. So. I, I saw a Snake Eyes at Wadsworth Walmart. I'm sure by the time this podcast is released, he will not be there. But I know Snake Eyes is pretty popular. Yeah. I don't care about Power Rangers per se either. Uh, I bought the Pink Ranger at one point because I was going to get a couple yeah. of the classic ones. I don't know too much about Power Rangers. But, you know, in some ways, childhood right there. Because I've seen a few episodes. in the But the Pink Ranger could not hold up her arrow uh, and stuff. How I wanted it to, so I I, mean, just, I, I didn't really like it compared to uh, what I've heard people say about the Bandai ones, the 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 import ones from Bandai to Machi Nations. I will say this, closing out our updates: the Power Rangers line is very high quality, just based on what I'm seeing, which is high quality figures. They're doing a good job with that line. It's funny because I I don't see a whole lot of um the Ghostbusters line being sold. It's like no one's touching that. I guess because I think that's because I think Hasbro was late to the party with the Ghostbusters figures because so many other companies did them such as like Marvel Select and Mezco and and, and, and Mattel had a whole line a few years ago yeah that uh, it's it's like um uh, what, oh, what was that video game Hasbro did for a little last year that they didn't seem to continue with that line what was that called uh Rampage or something I don't remember but they did a video game line too that they stopped one more really quick thing is Ronin Warriors, if anyone watched Toonami as a kid, you definitely remember Ronin Warriors. It's uh, In Japan, it was known as Japanese Samurai Troopers, but uh, 
They're doing there's a PX preview exclusive Sage of Halo slated for July 2021, which looks amazing, and I'm definitely going to get it. Unfortunately, uh, Sentinel, who's the company, decided they're going to stick with the $144.99 price tag, which is stupid. It should be about $100. I definitely hope they continue with this line, so I will continue to support it and unfortunately spend $144.99 on it in July. All but, right. but it looks really cool. Well, you... Uh with that stuff i love companies i'm not familiar with oh yeah so sentinel has some really um they have some really cool things it's just it's really weird because this is 112 scale for this Mm -hmm. and then um sentinel is also released the px preview for um their fighting armor iron spider which looks gorgeous did look cool i was half tempted to get those but I, i i just Past. Aren't they doing like Iron Man, Cap, and Spider Man? Yeah. Yeah. Those and are pretty cool. It, it really. I can see why you would collect those if, if that's your thing. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely tempted on it. But it's like, how is this $100? But the Ronin Warriors figures are $144.99. It's just sometimes when I see some of these prices for import companies, I mean, a lot more often than not, I've loved import figures when I get them and I think they're worth the money. But $144.99 is definitely pushing it. Right. Okay. So Cause that's like. That's like halfway to a hot toy price, totally. if you will. Exactly. Okay, going on to our first topic of the day, frustrations of a toy collector. So what does frustrations of being a toy collector mean to you? I know what it means to me. <laughs> and I know Kyle knows what it means to him. So what we're going to talk about on this topic, and it seems to be like I've been hearing more frustrations from collectors as of late, based on whether you're looking trying to look for stuff that... It just isn't stocked, or stuff that just it should have been in stores months ago and it's just showing up now, or it should have, or it's just showing up really early and you are not ready for it. Everything we as collectors, toy collectors, find frustrating about companies, about distribution, about shipping, about this monotonous movement of you have to pre-order this, you have to pre-order this, you have to pre-order this, you have to pre-order everything. So I'm gonna go through some topics. I'll start off by asking you, what frustrates you the most as a collector? And you can just give me three, your top three right off the bat. And then I'll go down the list of what like I found was frustrating for me. So you go ahead. Floor is open to you, my friend. What are your top three to five frustrations? Logistics. Companies not, not shipping out their product when they should, pushing back dates. And then logistics goes into Walmart shelves in a lot of ways being empty or obsolete or just not having any section like a star wars section or those would be those would be the main two ones those would be the main two anything online that frustrates you when you go online shop uh yeah when uh when i want something at a price on ebay <laughs> and then a douchebag outbids <laughs> me and i just don't feel like paying that price <laughs> Like, well, you know, bidders, yeah, bidding war. That's, I, that's a good I one. also, oh, I also hate, I hate people who like intensely scalp. Like, it's one thing. Okay, that's a good one. It's one thing if like, like, let's say for example with Mezco, if you buy two, right? You want to use one to barter with, mm-hmm. and you know, so you buy two as an investment. But some of these people that buy six and seven, and they buy for multiple by a whole accounts. Wave, yeah. Like, I hate, I hate that shit. Well, have you noticed that some Target stores? I mean, I haven't seen it personally here, but. Northeast Ohio, but like a lot of Target stores have said, oh, only one figure per customer, limiting people. You can't take more than the whole wave, or you. It, it's it's super weird. None of the you can't buy two of the same. That's another one. And it depends on the area too, because like Medina Target doesn't do that, but Strongsville Target, yeah, in Northeast Ohio, they limit you to like one of the NECA figures. Right. Which They're is... having a lot of problems with that. Which and is weird because they the have... GI Joe stuff. They have a huge set. It, I'm sure there are some people that are upset because, like, I can understand both sides of the fence because, like, if you get there first and you want to buy the whole wave and if someone would just limit me to one of the Marvel Legends, like, if I saw two of the same one and you wanted one because we do that for each other... Yeah, we and, do it. And yeah. if they were to limit us, I, I'd be pissed. I would not be happy. I, it's... But it, it's... It, I get it why they're doing it. Yeah. But it limits your freedom to shop. So it's 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 a double edged sword. I mean, it's like I get it. I get. I think you shouldn't buy more than two of what, like if it's the same thing. Yes, if it's the same thing, I get that limit. Like, oh well, okay, here's Spider Man vintage retro figures. 
okay, I'll buy two of those. Okay. But if you can't buy three of them or whatever. You can't buy three of the same figure. Or, I mean, like, I mean, you could, I guess, buy the whole wave. I mean, that finders keepers. But I, I just wish, piggybacking off what you just said, I wish stores stocked more where it was like, I think the Spider-Man vintage stuff. They're going to stock one wave. They're not stocking two waves of the same figure line. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like elongates its shelf life or put like, I don't know, maybe put like three waves of the same, of, of like uh, G.I. Joe figures or something out there. Or if you're going to do it, stock it like every two weeks. Make sure it's stocked every two weeks with two waves or three waves of that like G.I. Joe or Spider-Man Vintage or whatever like that. Right, it's like um one of the uh, one of the coolest things over the summer. I, I pick and choose with my Funkos, but they uh, Target did exclusive Blacklight Funkos, and I still need to buy those posters. Yeah. Uh, there I can't think of the one, but there's one of the posters I wanted. But anyways, um the main thing I wanted was uh the pint glasses, and yeah. did I show you those? Ah, uh, who knows? You have so much stuff. I'll, I'll have to show you eventually, but I got the pint glasses, and they're really cool. However, like, the a day or two, like, the week it was released or whatever over the summer, mm -hmm. um, they were sold out of all the pops, and I fortunately got the last pint series, or last of the pints, uh -huh. at Strongsville Target. Hallelujah. But, um, they never restocked it. Yeah. Which... I don't know whose fault that is. It might be Funko's fault for limiting who get you know, the what the targets get. But it's just it. It's frustrating. Very. I mean, like I'll agree with you there, where it's like I haven't seen the Spider-Man retro line get restocked. Yeah, the weird thing is, I, you know, like it came and went. That's it. You missed it. There you go. The weird thing too you is missed it that week. I the only one I haven't seen in person, surprisingly, is Spider-Man. I don't know why. I have all of them except the Green Goblin and Spider-Man, and I'll probably just get the Green Goblin online. But, yeah, I mean, like, just a lot of stuff that isn't stock. Like, I haven't seen the Count Dooku wave with Kit Fisto, and that's, I guess, only through GameStop because I can't, I haven't found it in Walmart or Targets. Other frustrations I have is pre-ordering stuff. They want you to pre-order everything now. They don't. How about you just stock in your stores so I don't have to pre-order stuff? I'm, I'm, I'm really getting tired of this whole, well, you got to pre-order this in order like, so, you could, so you could ship it to our store. Like, no, you should have it in the store so I could buy it when I come to the store. I don't, I'm not interested in having like 10 pre-orders on something. Another thing you said is scalpers. I'm really sick of scalpers. And more is being done to combat that. I get that. But I, I get really sick of scalpers. You know, just uh, upcharging stuff, whether it's on Amazon, $10 more, plus shipping. And like a Mandalorian uh, best car armor figure costs like 50 bucks, to, like 30 to 50 bucks, plus shipping. Or you get like the Spider-Man because he's hard to find. People are charging like 60 to 30, 30 to 60 bucks for him just to you know, get him online. And it's like, this is ridiculous. It's an action figure. It's not made out of gold or any metallic paint or anything. It's like, And it's not like it's one of those like, you know, Louis Marx company tin toys that are really hard to find right. from like the 40s. I mean, other things, it's just, yeah, we, you pit on it, stores not stocking, shelves being empty. I mean, like, collecting too much is kind of my thing, where it's like I must have less and less space, and i got to get rid of some stuff. It's like, there's like five other waves, of five other lines I'm collecting, and it's like, they're still going strong, and it's like... Or, 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 or what I mean by, like, that also collecting too much is like, like, Hedro Marvel Legends throws a lot at you at once. Right. You know? Like, that's a frustration. Like, and you, and you feel like you have to race, and it's like... I mean, like, I'm kind of getting to the part where it's like, you know what, if I don't get the Magneto and two-pack with Charles Xavier or the Old Man Logan two-pack, I'm sure that's going to be available online in, like, till February. Because it's like, I'm still seeing stuff from last year being available. Like, you know, remember when they did the Marvel 80 years, like the Hulk and the Wolverine and the Juggernaut and Colossus? Like, they're still online. You can still technically get them and stuff like that. So it's like... Even a year from now, you could still, like, or six months to a year, you could still get that stuff. Too, yeah, too much stuff released at once. I mean, like, look at what's being released right now by Hasbro Marvel Legends, where it's like, oh, we just did the Sentinel crowdfunding, and also, like, uh, Hasbro in general. Oh, we'll now do the uh, Mandalorian ship, Razorcrest ship now. Crowdfund that after you just, like, did the Sentinel. Or get the, get the Deadpool 2 pack, get the. X Men movie figures, get the Storm two pack, get the Old Man Logan two pack, 
it, like all this is like hitting at once. Oh, don't forget the Mr. Fix It waves ca- just came out. Don't forget to get that or the Venom wave, you know, which features Venom and and all the symbiotes for this month and whatnot. Yeah, like they don't they like it's they don't all spread it out as much as they. No, like. I mean it's all at once, dude. Like the Deadpool, the X Men movie stuff, the comic book X Men stuff, Mister Fix It wave, Venom wave. That's a lot of stuff at once. How are you not spacing that out? It's getting ridiculous. That's that's one of my bigger frustrations. Where oh yeah, here's a whole bunch of stuff to buy. It's like, dude, I love your product. I want to buy all of it, but I can't buy it all at once. There needs to be some understanding of people's finances and understanding, like, oh, well, let's spread it out for just to alleviate people's wallets. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's a big frustration for me. So, uh, another frustration for me is, like, when my figures fall down. <laughs> I have to set them back up, and, like, and then it knocks half of them down, and I just get really frustrated, and then, like, I'm sweating just trying to put them up so they don't fall down again. Does that frustrate you? ever have that happen? Yeah, when you try to get in, like, the coolest pose, and you're just like, ah. And they keep, like, falling over. Re-releases. That was another one of mine. Uh, I, you have the floor, my friend. Call Obsidian. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention this on the channel. Ah, it's got so many releases. Uh, well, they're making a Children of Thanos Amazon exclusive Marvel Legends 5-pack. It's uh, Corvus Glaive, Thanos with the charred arm and face. It's all Marvel Legends. Um, a re-release of... Um, Proxima Midnight. And um, Call Obsidian. Call Obsidian, which and, in the armor, film accurate. And then I forget the last. What's that? What's the guy, the Squidward guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember. Oh, I'm about to. It's not Corvus Glaive, but it's um. Children. Yeah, just look at him. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, Google edited Children of Thanos to Children of Thanks. So thanks, Google. <laughs> Why can't I remember the last name? He was already a Marvel legend. Um, the Black Order. The Black Order. Um, oh, Ebony Ma. Ebony Ma. Yeah. So they're making all those characters again. And so if you made the Call of City and build a figure, first of all, congratulations. But they're making another one. And if you already have Proxima Midnight and Ebony Ma, you know. Some of these Whatever. updates look kind of cool, but at the same time, it's just a cash grab because they have the molds. It is just a cash grab, and I don't like that. I mean, when I first saw that, I was mad. Now, what am I going to do is I'm going to sell my old ones now so I can get the new ones because the new ones are better, so I'll do that. But that's the stuff I'm talking about. Like, I'm going to get the I'm gonna get the set because it's just – I don't have Corvus Glaive, and I just didn't want to buy a Loki. But whatever. So I do want the complete set. I'll get the complete set, but I am not happy about those re-releases. Why can't Hasbro, or any toy company for that matter, just make the figures right the first time and not go off concept art? I'm really getting tired of that. I hope they change that and not go off concept arts. It's not important that you get the figures out during the movie. What is important is that you get the figures out and have a great quality figure that's accurate to the film. I mean, you agree with that pretty much? For sure. Other things that make me mad are there's a lot of exclusives now. Amazon exclusives, GameStop exclusives, Walmart exclusives, Walgreens exclusives, Best Buy exclusives. I mean, like, there's, like, so many exclusives now you got to keep track of. And, like, some figures aren't even exclusive. They just sell that wave of figures sometimes only at GameStop. And you don't find them at Walmart or Target. Or sometimes they only have this fig- this wave of figures only at Walmart and Target and not at any other stores. Do you agree there's a lot of too many exclusives? Yeah, sometimes uh, some people do a better job with their exclusives than others. But what I've noticed is, like, for example, Target. I love their exclusive Black Widow. But it's super weird that Target got their Black Widow and our Walmart still have not gotten their Black Widow. And mm-hmm. I still want it. Target put all their Black Widows on the shelf at once and then now they're gone. It's like yeah, it, it's like you blink, you miss it. Yeah, I mean, they, those Black Widows from the Black Widow movie, like, you can't find those figures anymore. Like, that was really what came and went. I am so happy I bought the entire wave during the pandemic. Yeah, you were uh, right on the money with your instincts there. I will... I, I didn't think that. Like, I thought, oh, for sure we, you would still be able to see the Black Widow movie figure still, but you can't find them anywhere. That's, like, weird, because that would be, like, a wave I thought was going to hang around for a while. And that Crimson Dynamo is still incredible. Yeah, but you know what nobody's buying is that... that that new X-Men Age of Apocalypse wave. I guess it's just too obscure for most people. Oh, yeah, it is funny because, like... Peg warmers. 
Shout out to Talker Art, one of our favorite YouTube reviewers. Mm -hmm. He was so excited about that just because he has such a huge collection that, you know, he likes new characters. But I do agree, most people are not excited about that wave. But the opposite is true about the Strongman wave. But the Strongman wave just cracks me up, which it's like, when in doubt, with your if you're Marvel, when in doubt, throw a Deadpool in there. Yeah. With your DC, when in doubt, throw a Harley Quinn. Um, but I will admit, it's... Just a repaint with a sculpted hat. I do want that pirate Deadpool. I can't help myself. Yeah. I mean, rattling off a couple more frustrations. Small window to get figures, where because so much is released at once. We talked about that. Figures breaking, but I don't normally have an issue with most of my figures breaking. I mean, is there a certain line that you find figures break easily? I know Marvel Select kind of is like that. Like, what, if your figures broke, what figures are the... What brand, I guess, and company from well, that brand? It's Breaks. it's sometimes you gotta run hot water through it. I love my Marvel Select Sandman, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, Marvel Select some of their stuff is tight. I ran warm water through both of his arms. One loosened up, the other didn't. But I, Marvel Select does sometimes worry me with the stiffness. Yeah, because they make big figures, and sometimes you gotta balance them and pose them and stuff. And it seems like a more brittle plastic. Other things I. Their grind my gears. Um, our scalpers, obviously, we talked about that. Price gouging. Just, you know, we just, you can't. Dude, they're action figures. I mean, try to help each other out. I mean, it's already hard enough to find these things and for companies to stock them. So don't be that guy that just, I'm going to make a profit and I'm going to buy the whole wave and I'm going to make a profit and, like, I'm going to sell these $25 figures at $50 a pop. It's like, come on, dude. Like, I get it if you got to make maybe five. Maybe ten extra dollars, but you know you gotta you f factor in shipping costs too. You know, like that's part of it, and also build a figure parts. People over like totally price gouge build a figure parts. Yes, if it comes with a figure that is less popular, like or a certain arm, they'll charge like fifty dollars for that one. Yeah, shoot. I will say though, the one thing about Hasbro re-releasing stuff is I truly believe it's gonna happen. But I'm holding out for Fat Thor being re-released as just a deluxe figure. Yeah. Just so they can cash grab it again. Because that wave, I will admit, I, I didn't really like anyone from that wave except, oh, I can't remember his name, Idris Elba's character. Yeah, I mean, like... Those, What's his name? What, from, oh, uh, Heim, Heimdall? Hemdale, yeah. Uh, I liked him, but he would have been cooler in the, the gold armor, too, from Thor. Yeah, one. that would have been a more interesting. That would be a way better figure. But Fat Thor, it just cracks me up because it's just like... People were price gouging the hell out of that line too because yeah, some were. some it wasn't very easy to find. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the Venom wave yet with the Venomized cap and stuff. I haven't seen that wave yet. That's another wave, <laughs> and I'm really excited about that wave. Well, that's another thing. It's like re-releases. Like, oh yeah, here's the figure you bought, but a better paint deco later on. It's like, well, I just bought, <laughs> like, I just got the build a figure built and like you just released now a deluxe figure with better paint one of the first times i saw that was like two or three years back they had that sdcc exclusive thor set and i was like "Ooh, i can't remember his name but i was like i want uh the dark elf yeah the, the kid in the dark elves i bought that and then later that year they're like well here's uh you know they repainted the dark elf and i was just like why did i bother right i mean granted i still like the paint job in the sdcc better but i was just like disappointed yeah, because as far as build figures I'm concerned, I just need one more piece for the molten man, that long arm, and I also need like two feet in the uh, right arm for Kingpin, which is the Kingpin, the original suit Kingpin. But yeah, I mean, it's just like re-releases, I'm just getting really like, I didn't get the Venom build a figure, but I could see if you were upset, like, you didn't get, you got you built that one, and then they released another one with a different deco. But I, I get it, because they did have a, some channels did have a, interview with um the marvel legends guys dwight and his crew and it makes sense but you know like here's another problem you find stuff to be sold out online a lot because i know you shop a lot online like like a lot of people really complain like let's say like mezco like that stuff gets sold out so fast mezco does some really annoying stuff like with their website uh, I, uh, online shopping. They will count you down until they're going to drop the release. And uh -huh. then when you go on there, their site gets flooded with traffic. Bandai does the same thing. Except Bandai, uh, with their exclusives this last time, they had two different releases. So 
it was a pain in the butt, but you ultimately were able to get it. But with Mezco, you've got to immediately log in and check out. And this last time, uh, their one made-up character, Dr. Midnight or whatever, yeah. I didn't log in in time, but I did the... Uh, I was added to the waitlist, and I was able to get so far two out of the three that I've been waitlisted for. But the thing that Mezco does is they you put down a non-refundable deposit, and I've heard stories about people who they'll eventually say, "Oh, I'm sorry, you were not able to get this," and they'll just or they will not they'll keep the deposit keep the of like thirty two dollars. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that's it, that's highway robbery right there. And the funny thing too that Mezco does is. Sometimes, I, I mean, I've yet to get a Mezco t-shirt, but sometimes it's cool when they include a t-shirt. But then sometimes with some of their online exclusives, they'll do some stuff like, oh, here's a pin set. And then they'll try to, you know, think that adding a pin set justifies like a $50 price increase. That I mean, Mezco's, they just seem to make a lot of people angry. I mean, like, I haven't been, like, recently impressed by any of the recent stuff. But, like, a lot of people, like, the thing is, like, they can't get them online, like, those are those online exclusives. Because, yeah, you, you said the traffic happens all at once, and their servers go down, and you hit refresh, 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 and guess what? It's, like, click, 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 and it's, like, nothing, 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 can't get the figure. Oh, guess what? Sold out. You missed it. Sorry. Like, come on. Like, I mean, I don't know how many figures you have, but you better have at least a decent amount where it's like, I would say at least the majority of your fans can get it. I'm not saying everybody, because you know, who knows how many that'll be. You know, at least satisfy 85% of the people that want it, you know, like stock-wise. So, yeah, I mean, I never had any problems such as like having to refresh the button or whatever, because I'm not all about that whole like whole countdown thing, and then it's like, oh, time to buy, and it's like click, 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 and buy it, buy 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 right now, all at once. I, I, I don't think that works because it just makes online traffic and then it makes the servers go down and everyone gets pissed off because they can't get through. Were you going to say something? No, I was going to say uh, it's the one time where I really just waited was for the 89 Batman. And it's funny, though, because the thing with Mezco is if you miss out on it, some of their prices just skyrocket. Like, it cracks me up that Shazam. Like, I'm so happy I own one because that Shazam is... The, the whole point that they created these was because they said they wanted, like, affordable versions of Hot Toys. Yeah. Some of these are going for Hot Toys prices now, though, because people are stupid. Right. Because they have li- these have limited runs, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah. All right, so on to our next topic, animated shows. So we're going to kind of go through shows we watched as kids and had toy lines. So... Most of the toys we liked as kids were based off television shows or movies, but we're going to stick to animated TV shows. So to name a few, uh, if you were an 80s kid, you would probably remember Transformers and TMNT. I, I didn't watch those shows, but um, they did have great toy lines. Uh, TMNT, I'm pretty impressed by, you know, it was one of those first animated shows that really brought out that toy line. Like, the vehicles, the figures, and stuff like that. Playmates, yeah. I mean, like... And I love that Super 7 is paying homage to it. Yeah. With uh, the fact that, like, in the original Playmates toys, it looked like you had to, like, cut out their their weapons. Like how you would a model. Yeah. And Super 7 is molding, like, the turtles' weapons and stuff just like that. So you have to, like, cut it out with, like, modeling equipment. It's really cool. Well, wasn't it Kenner that made the original TMNT? Playmates. Oh, it was Playmates. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sure. Playmates has had the license since the beginning. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I kind of, in some ways, feel bad for Playmates, but kind of don't. Yeah. Because now with with NECA and Super 7, no offense to Playmates, but it almost makes them obsolete in a lot of ways because NECA and Super 7 are just kicking butt. They did a lot of cool stuff. Like, they did, like, the Turtle Volkswagen Mobile, which was really cool. And then they did that, uh, was it Technodrome? Yeah, Technodrome. Yeah. And, like, they did this cool, like, the big blimp thing. TMNT blimp looking set that was really cool. Um, I didn't watch. I wasn't a TMNT fan or watched the show, but like Same. you know, like I've seen the I've seen like the history of TMNT. It's really interesting. The comic book came out, and then like they wanted to capitalize on it, so like they wanted to make an animated show to sell toys. That's pretty much a lot of why they had these animated shows was to you keep the toy companies in business, but like to you know, make a toy line. So they would make an animated show and, like, they'd make up characters. TMNT made made up characters in the 80s 
like the fly guy and the rock guy and the triceratops guy and the dinosaur looking guy and it's like they made that to sell toys and like those were even cool characters they were just winging it just for the show and they made cool characters which ended up to equal of course cool toys their um their thing too about their inspiration from jack kirby from that uh uh, that Netflix show, The Toys That Made Us. Yeah. It was fascinating where they said they thought this was so stupid and so ridiculous. And then people love it. I will say this, though. As weird as it sounds, I know Street Sharks is pretty much a ripoff in a lot of ways of TMNT. Yeah. However, I don't really give a shit about TMNT, but I love Street Sharks. And I'm guessing that's because yeah. I'm a 90s kid. I will say this in retrospect to your Street Sharks. Those toys have gone up in value. Unfortunately. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But I, I remember I heard rumors and about um, where Mattel was thinking about crowdfunding it. And it's like, Mattel owns the rights to Street Sharks and Gargoyles. If they re-release those for adult collectors, they'll have just as much success as, as they've had with their He-Man for okay. an up, updated He-Man. Because they will, those will sell so well. Well, our friend Adam from Adam's Action Figures, he owns a toy shop. He has those Street Shark figures and he spent a good chunk of change to get them. I forget how much. They're yeah, they're worth a lot. Mint in the box. I've had. It's crazy. I I, I, I thought really about did not expect that to. I mean, maybe because it's so niche and so rare to get those toys. I mean. I, yeah, I I've thought about getting a few mint on mint and card and, and not, but I'm just. I have my fingers crossed that Mattel is just going to do, you know, that same box style of packaging and just with, with some uh, updated articulation because they'll sell. I want to see more respect for gargoyles because I got in, you got me into that show and I've been watching it's it so regularly on Disney Plus. So good. Well, especially because the creator. It's kind of like '90s version of TMNT, like in popularity and, he, and, and genre. He, oh yeah, it has a call following. Plus, it has a uh, Goliath is played by uh, an iconic voice actor too, who also did the Spawn anime series, okay. and, and and then uh, Brooklyn is played by the same guy who plays Patrick Starr, I mean, which is hilarious. And yeah. the show is just, the show is so, it's gothic. Yeah. And it's, and it's dark. It's funny. And it's, it's, yeah, it's funny. And it's just, it's a really fascinating concept. It has a very good blend of comedy action. And, and David God. Xanatos is a really fun villain. Yeah. And then they introduce like folklore, like uh, Macbeth is in there. Yeah. Like you get the little past and like, uh, like little windows into the past kind of thing, which I like too. I and it, it's, and really, it's really a really kick-ass show. And it's so fascinating. And I love the fact that the one of the creators, uh, since it's so popular on Disney XD, he said he would not want to do a reboot. Thank God. Yeah. No. But he's because uh, I wouldn't want them to ruin perfection. Oh yeah. But he's not opposed to doing a continuation, which could be cool like like how they just announced today that they're bringing back dexter for like a limited run series right it's like i would not be opposed to them doing a continuation did, did you know it was a comic book the gargoyles yeah they also came out with a comic book i want to say marvel it was under the marvel comics banner in the so. 90s yeah and yeah. i've thought about trying to find that graphic novel because i just i truly have, i've loved it it does kind of remind me in a lot of ways too of like x-men it has a lot of parallels where it's like right you know people People fear what they don't understand. Oh yeah, definitely. And they fear the gargoyles, even though the gargoyles are there to protect them. And it's just, it's, it's really for the fact that it was on during the same time as like, what was that? Ducktales and what was that? Spin something. Tailspin. Yeah. The fact that they had that on during the same block is is fascinating. They also had um, Mighty Ducks, even though it only lasted a season. That yeah. was a, that was a fun show. Yeah, I mean gargoyles. They had a cool toy line, and it's. I'm willing to bet money that toy line is going to skyrocket in price as soon as they... If they ever make, like, a live-action Gargoyles, which I think Gargoyles... I mean, the toys are cool, and don't get me wrong, they're they're classics. And who made them? Was it Mattel? Mattel. Mattel. And, and, the, and speaking of live-action, Jordan Peele right. said that he would be willing to do it, which is would I, be really interesting because he's only directed horror thus I, far. I think that has a lot of potential because, like, why isn't anybody making toy lines of that? Like, not any toy company is making a toy line of gargoyles at all. It's all Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, it's like, enough with the Ninja Turtles. They're focusing on the 80s. Focus. It's like, give, give, us a, give us 90s kids some well, love. Yeah, focus on the animated shows. That's why X-Men, like Marvel Legends X-Men line is doing well tmnt stuff does well transformer stuff always does well just like look into making figures from animated shows i mean like batman beyond was i think they made a small toy line but it was a great show silver surfer made a decent toy line 
Uh, Avengers, eh, not such a great toy line. It's a pretty short-lived show. Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, it's weird to see it in in person with like. I mean, now the characters you know, but it, it, everyone always admitted the fact they made an Avengers TV show without Iron Man and some of these. Well, X Men, X Men animated series it had a really great toy line. Spider Man did. You still want that? Uh, what was that? What's the playset? The uh, Daily Bugle Daily play, Bugle, yeah. play set. So that was like if we're talking about animated Spider Man, like they had, like all the figures, villains, like even like cameo characters like Doctor Strange and Captain America. They had like Electro and Doc Ock and shocker and they also made like play sets which was a daily bugle play set you know had like the hobgoblin the mega glider from one episode so like stuff like that is really cool um like spider slayers and stuff like that they did for spider-man for x-men they had like the x-men like the x-men jet that was really cool the uh, headquarters i like stuff like that like play sets and stuff because i like not only the toy but I also like the art on the box. And to me, the art on the box is so cool because it's like going back in time. They uh, they did a lot of cool things too. Um, I remember the uh, they still do some in some ways, but I always loved where they would have like the uh, the live the live action role play for the kids where you you get little little spider thing and you fill it up yeah. with water and stuff. Yeah. Or uh, another one I liked was the Sentinel from the X Men old X Men way of the giant sentinel yeah where it has the little thing that comes out yeah i've still been tempted too to get the galactus uh it, it'd be cool to get it light lit up because the galactus comes with a uh a drill right. and i always find, i don't know why i found that cool iron man animated series and that great show but had its own toy line i think they had like one line of figures they had the armor that came apart and you could put it back on they had like modok and mandarin and iron man and war machine and spider girl they introduced a lot of cool characters in that show but i only watched one episode in it it was bad. It was just not as exciting. There are some good ones, though. Um, the Fing Ping Hoom one's pretty good. Like, it gets better as the show goes on. Mandarin as a character, though, I really liked. Yeah. I made him pretty cool. Um, other animation, like Batman Beyond. I don't know if you have any other Batman Beyond, like, toys? Um, back from the day. That, that, that Burger King one you got for me. I, oh, yeah. The uh, I, I really want the Batmobile Mint in box, but... I haven't been able to find it. From Batman Beyond? Yeah, because his Bat... Oh, they made one? Yeah, his Batmobile flies. Burger King is what I'll probably go with, with their little Batman Batmobile from that. I actually had that one when I was a kid. I But that show was awesome. I remember watching it with my mom when it premiered on the uh, and, on the WB. Yeah, and that's a continuation of Batman the Animated Series. I personally have the Bruce Wayne Mansion Batcave playset from the... The first one, like from the early 90s. So that one's really hard to find. I have that one. I have also the Batmobile from the Adventures of Batman and Robin, the animated series. Just bought that this year. Had to get that one. Love, like, the concept of that and the box art. Also, but I'm still looking for the Batmobile from the original animated series, that long, deco-looking Batmobile. Still looking for that one. Because there's so many different ones they make, but... That one I'm, I'm looking for. Any of like those piqued your interest? I mean, the figures, obviously. I have most of the figures. Like, I have Penguin, Two-Face, Batman, Scarecrow, Killer Croc, and all that stuff. Do you collect, like, all their stuff like that? I mean, yeah, you kind of do and kind of don't. Sometimes. I, I know I'm... Uh, one thing I've been wanting to get into for a while, and I think I'm finally going to start to pull the trigger slowly but suddenly, is uh, vintage wind-up toys from Louis Marks Company and from... Uh, uh, Japan from like the 30s and 40s and 50s and stuff mm-hmm. and uh, I have a couple Playmates toys made run of Warriors figures in the 90s and there's a couple I'm interested in but it's just all about like it's all about the price being right yeah something I will admit there are a couple things where I've overpaid for if you want it bad enough you don't care but there's some things where you're just like yeah oh wait right Justice League animated show had a very good figure line they did almost every character that there were like three inch figures yeah and uh and oh what was it uh what's i can't think of the name but their base in space what was that the watchtower yeah they did a watchtower which is awesome they did yeah for three inch figures yeah oh i didn't i didn't know that you have to show me that but yeah they did like every single villain they did every single figure they did like red hood joker bat all batman's villains all wonder woman's villains all all the Justice League villains, all Superman's villains, all different variations of Lex Luthor. Three-inch figures, Justice League, oh, awesome. I just wish they... Oh, okay, I see that. That's interesting. Huh. I just wish they released stuff like that into that scale and, and, that, and that much diversity in six-inch. 
And even if they re-release that in 3-inch, I still buy it. And then they also released the Jet with it, too. The Javelin 7. I will say, like, just uh, finishing off our little talk about animated shows, I, w- I mean, they do for the Nicktoons, like, these little mini, like, blind box things. Like, I know, well, not blind box, but I know, like, the Loyal Subjects is doing Nicktoons figures. So I'm like, I like that kind of concept where you have, like, small cartoon figures and you can collect, like, all the Nicktoons and stuff like that. I'm hoping they do stuff like that with, like, Cartoon Network cartoons figures, like, like little Powerpuff Girls, Dexter, Samurai Jack would be cool. You know, Courage the Carly Dog, Johnny Bravo, just kind of stuff like that where it's like, oh yeah, collect this like wave of small figures from Cartoon Network. Do one like off like Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs or something like that. Because right now they, um, they've um they done Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs. Um, the only company that's doing it right now is QFig from Quantum Mechanics. And they have some cool little little statues of those. But they're not figures. No, technically not. They're not articulated. Yeah. They're just they're just like See, little I'm... statues. But they're 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 like um, where is it? They're like the Mister Freeze licking the ice cream cone that oh, I bought you. They're okay. from that same company. They look cool. The Pinky and the Brain one I might get. Yeah, I mean, I just like to see like figures made of like Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain. You know, Garfield was an animated show. That would be cool to do a line of that. Thornberries, you know, that'd be cool. I mean, like Rocco, Doug. Ah, Real Monsters, a big hit. I have that on my calendar. Ugh, that'd be cool. Just Even if they were little figures, I really wouldn't be complaining. I'm not saying they have to be 6-inch, because that would take up a lot of space, because there's a lot of cartoons. But it's like Samurai Jack. Like I can't believe they never did a Samurai Jack action figure line. They actually did. They did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I'll show you. Do you know more of the... Or how about this, Cat and Planet? <laughs> that terrible cartoon. I think it was from they had they had some like this. Oh, okay. And then uh, I think it was from Mattel in two thousand one, and then they had some like this. Oh, all right. So that's something. And, and then now they've re-released them in the. Uh, they've re- released a couple from Kid Robot and from Titans, the little mini blind bags. And I have a Samurai Jack from the mini blind bags. Says, I haven't seen it since it's gone come back on television. But as a kid, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Because it was too. it was it was from the creator of a. Uh, of Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Or uh, Recess, which they did figure line of Recess. Yes, they've only Perfect, done... Perfect, They've man. only done that, what? That make, was the it McDonald's? McDonald's Happy Meal line, yeah. That's it. Dude, and they have so many characters. You can make King Bob, Upside Down Girl, Swinger Girl, the, uh, TJ's Gang, uh, Finster and Randall 2-Pack. Right there. Come on, people. Wake up. It is... It is. Like, come on. Like, that, I would buy that in a heartbeat, man. All right, well, no doubt that all of those animated shows are great. I'm going to ask you, top three favorite animated shows. Batman, Mm -hmm. the animated series. Okay. Dragon Ball Z. Okay. uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Okay. Mine, Batman, the animated series. X-Men, the animated series. Spider-Man, the animated series. Just from, well, I mean, as an adult, because I I watched... That, well, that's my pick as an adult because I rewatched that stuff. But like in my top five, obviously Gargoyles and Justice League and stuff. But as a kid, I guess I'd have to say Justice League, Spider-Man animated series, Justice League, and Batman animated series. And I also like the Superman animated series. Also great shows as a kid because those are the ones I watched. But as far as like Gargoyles, I, I, I first time I watch them is as an adult right now. All right. Well, anything else to add about animated shows? No, I mean, it was a great time to be a kid in the 80s and 90s when you had Saturday morning cartoons. And... Yeah, you had Saturday morning cartoons, and but, then after school you had uh, Toonami. Yeah, I mean, if you're a kid and you don't know what that is, like they had cartoons on Saturday mornings while you ate your breakfast. It wasn't like a whole streaming service, but good times. Totally miss it. Love those shows. Check them out. Some of those ones we've, we've suggested if you're new to the channel and if you're new to cartoons. Because they don't have as much good stuff as they did they used to when we were kids. That's a fact. That's not old guys barking about the past. But all right, so that ends our episode of episode 16, frustrations of a toy collector and animated shows or toys are based off of. Um, if you're new to the channel, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on this podcast and also our talking toy shorts and also our documentaries, little shows. It's a new segment. Check out our toy biz one. The Kenner one will be up before the month is out. I promise you that. Uh, it is October. And, if yeah, if you're new to the channel, it's, well, it's all about just conversations of Toy Collect and also uh, different topics. So just check out our shorts and our documentaries. 
like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thank you everybody for who are new to the channel, who recently subscribed and also viewed our new content and also some of our old content. Uh, your support goes your support goes a long way. Continue to help us grow because it's all dependent on you. Uh, we are on Facebook, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Uh, if you need help finding us on YouTube, there's two ways to find us. Go to recently changed the name to more less generic term, so it's just type in the Talking Toys Podcast channel and also. Another way to find the channel is if you type in like Stories of Toy Companies, which is our new documentary series about toy companies, whether they're still here or ones that have came and went. So um, also just a quick uh, note, our next episode will be episode 17, should be made next month. The holidays are coming around, so you're a little busy again, but you shouldn't have to wait as long as you did for this episode. We do apologize for that. It's the last stuff happening. Uh, next episode will be episode 17, and that topic will be... Blind boxes, mystery toys, and smaller toys, and our other topic will be Lego, the toy company from then to now, how they've grown as a company, and what they're expanding on, and just kind of talking about the company Lego, since they're such a huge company now, for adults, for kids, you know, for Marvel, for DC, for Harry Potter, for Star Wars, just Lego, a huge company, and also, you know, we'll be talking about blind boxes and mystery toys. What's your favorite small toys to pick up? Blind bags, blind boxes, mystery toys, what you like to pick up. We'll list some of our favorites and also ones we're collecting right now. So, without further ado, I'm Barack Lauer. I'm Kyle Walters. And we'll see you in the toy aisle.